So um, I would like to thank the organizers of this conference on liver diseases in Africa, um, which is an important conference, really. And I thank you for inviting me to give this talk on PART and the liver in African population. I just would like to say I really have nothing to disclose as far as this presentation is concerned. In the outline, I will uh, give a brief definition of uh, fat in the liver and the etiology, and we look at the burden of fatty liver, global and also African, and the progression of liver disease diagnosis, and then I will conclude this presentation. Uh, by definition, really, uh, fat in the liver is basically accumulation of fat in the liver. Uh, and it can be because of alcohol um, or some drugs. Uh, for example, some of the medicines used for treating uh, HIV. But it can also be non-alcoholic, um, which is basically uh, uh, obesity, uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is also can be part of metabolic syndrome. For this presentation, I am going to basically uh, confine myself to the non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver. So this uh, is accumulation of fat in liver in the absence of excessive alcohol intake, and it encamp encompasses a number of, uh, of stages we can just have a simple steatosis or fat in the liver, but this can also progress to inflammation as NASH, with or without uh, hepatic fibrosis. Uh, and this can progress to cirrhosis and eventually uh, some of these patients will end up with um, hepatocellular carcinoma. The burden of nafl d uh, varies really from place to place and from population to population. And uh, it is really based on the risk factor distribution. And uh, in some of the populations, it will be due to sensitivity of the detection methods uh, that we use. The, in terms of the prevalence, therefore, globally, it is uh, thought that about 25% of the general population actually have got um, uh, NAPOL D. And this, of course, like mentioned earlier on, it will vary. And uh, diabetes and uh, obesity form part, part of the major risk factors for this uh, NAPOL D. In Africa, as you, uh, you can see from this slide, about 13% um, uh, of the population is thought to have uh, NAPOL D. And uh, as you will see later on, uh, there are quite a bit of it's a, a, quite a bit of uh, issues with the data collected in Africa because um, the studies have not been really done um, systematically in a number of places, in a number of populations in Africa to define the extent of NAFOL D in this population. In uh, this uh, data which was collected together by Paruk and published last year from some of the African studies that are looking at NAFOL D in a, uh, several populations, um, looking at the population and the detection methods and uh, some of the risk association. You will see that most of the NAFOL B that we are talking about found among populations which have got type 2 diabetes. As you can see from studies from Nigeria, um, where up to about 68%, in fact, 69% of the uh, patients with uh, type 2 diabetes were found to have NAFL D. And these cuts across in the Sudan up to 50%, and in Ethiopia, 73%, and in South African studies this has been shown to go up to 87%. So you can see that the driving factor here is actually uh, type two diabetes mellitus, even in the African population. I want to draw your attention to the fact that the detection method in most of these studies, in all of them actually, was the abdominal ultrasound scan 
of the liver and um, the, in the only in the south african study biopsies were actually done um, to detect uh, nafl d in this population and so we will see later on that the abdominal ultrasound scan really has got a, a relatively low uh, sensitivity uh, for detection of this condition. We see that the, even in the developed world, that there has been a lot of studies looking at NASH um, and uh, the trajectory of uh, diabetes and obesity. And you can see that diabetes is thought, if you take the aggressive trajectory, you can see that by 2050, it is uh, anticipated that uh, there will be probably about 90% of the population with the NAFL D. Uh, but if you are conservative, you can say about half of this population. And this also affects the, I mean, it goes together with the obesity trends. Obesity is also on the rise. And so all these things uh, that we are talking about do not leave out Africa um, because, uh, as you will see in this next slide, there is a, a rising epidemic of diabetes in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Currently, with, it is uh, reported about 19 million adults have actually got uh, diabetes mellitus, and most of whom are actually type 2 diabetes mellitus. And this is expected to reach up to 47 million by 2045, especially if no control measures are actually put in place. And this is an, a problem because this is where we are going to end up with the, with the NAFL, NASH and NAFL D. Amongst the patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus, we can see in Africa, we have uh, currently uh, a report of about 30.4% of the population with the type 2 diabetes mellitus actually having NAFL D. Now, this is not a small uh, number, and uh, this will lead to a number of impacts, especially looking at um, the, the, the type of um, capacity and availability of equipment for detection and also management of some of these patients that uh, will be uh, found to have progress, uh, progressive liver disease based on I mean, from the NAFL D itself. Certainly, fat in the liver is not benign, and uh, we've mentioned this already. We have, uh, it starts just like a simple accumulation of fat in the liver, but this eventually progresses uh, to um, causing, uh, attracting inflammatory cells into the liver and then causing destruction of the liver cells, eventually causing scar tissue within the liver, ending up with cirrhosis and eventually uh, liver cancer in some of the patients. Again, you can see again that the, because of the uh, nature of NAFL D and its progression, that this study, which is done mainly in North America, shows that there will be um, an increase in the, the all-cause mortality in patients from those who do not have fatty liver and those who have got fatty liver and, they, and then eventually those who have got NASH. And so there is increasing risk of dying once somebody has fatty liver and progressing to um, the inflammatory phase. Uh, which is really uh, steatohepatitis. Now, comparing those non-diabetics and diabetics uh, with NASH, NAFL D, I mean, you see the progression of uh, the disease seem to be a little bit much slower. And in fewer people, from uh, the NAFL D to NASH, and then eventually to cirrhosis, and then to hepatocellular carcinoma, leading to mortality and liver transplant. But those who have got um, diabetes, this progression is a, a little bit rapid, and a, a number, the number, the percentage of those persons who actually progress from uh, NAFL D 
to cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma seem to increase as you know, uh, as the I mean in patients with diabetes compared to those uh, who do not have diabetes. Eventually, of course, once um, hepatocellular carcinoma is reached, then uh, the, there will be need for liver transplant. And of course, mortality will, uh, it will be enhanced also in patients who have cirrhosis. Uh, these, in our case in Africa, you will find that the preparation is not adequate to actually take care of these kind of situations. Uh, and so mortality is expected to be uh, increased. This study, uh, this report, which was uh, compiled by Ahmed uh, and uh, published uh, last year shows, uh, I mean 2017, shows um, that in looking at uh, several studies uh, which has been conducted looking at diabetes and obesity and metabolic syndrome in various African and uh, Middle East countries, you will see that the population uh, with the diabetes varies from country to country. Uh, obesity also varies from country to country. Metabolic syndromes the same. Now I can uh, see, for example, for example, in the Ugandan study here, where metabolic syndrome was uh, defined in 58 percent. This is basically because of the heterogeneity of the population that has been studied. Uh, in this particular case, the Ugandan study actually was done among diabetics and showing uh, metabolic uh, syndrome in up to 58% now. So we have a huge population of patients who have got diabetes, who actually, uh, or diabetes and obesity, who uh, eventually will end up with um, NAFLD and NASH and its complications. In in terms of signs and symptoms, really, uh, most patients with NAFLD will not present with any uh, sign. Uh, you know, in a few cases, there may be some fatigue, malaise, dull right upper quadrant abdominal discomfort. Uh, and um, really, these, these are not very common at all. And uh, mild jaundice may be seen very rarely. Uh, most diagnosis done in uh, patients who are found to have abnormal routine liver function tests. Just to say that this is a practice which is not common among many Africans to go and basically do routine tests. And so many times something is bringing uh, the patient to the, to the clinic to see the doctor other than just walking in to see um, the doctor. And so most times the diagnosis is really delayed uh, to be made. And most patients' uh, diagnosis will be made uh, when uh, complications have already taken place. Uh, what about the tests? The tests are done basically for the risk factors, and uh, this has been mentioned already. But then there are also now investigations to define and really quantify if it is possible, the NAFLD. And this will include liver biopsy. Now, this is fraught with complications. And um, so uh, many patients will not accept uh, liver biopsy to be done. Ultrasound scan is the one which is relatively widespread, but it has a relatively low sensitivity, although now uh, probes are being developed which can actually pick um, fatty liver uh, properly. And uh, we hope that these probes can be found in many parts of Africa so that studies can be done. Um, the MR spectrometry is still expensive, as well as the transient elastography uh, with the controlled attenuation. Uh, um, this, these are tests which are not yet very much you know, available. They are very, very rare and they're quite expensive. And so because of these kind of uh, testing issues, it becomes a little bit uh, difficult for many uh, public, I mean, uh, population studies to be done to really define the, um, the extent of fatty liver in the African population. Um, hopefully, if the ultrasound scan um, probes which can detect fat becomes really widespread, this will improve on the studies that will help uh, to define this burden. 
So there are burdens, there are several challenges of fat uh, and the liver in African population fast. There is increasing burden, but we have a very limited population data. And this really needs to be worked on. Control mechanisms are not readily available in most of our countries in Sub-Saharan Africa. So um, we need most accurate diagnostic tests, um, and, but most of them are expensive and they're not uh, really readily available. So we need a lot of advocacy uh, involving um, various stakeholders. So in conclusion, NAFLD is a looming epidemic in Sub-Saharan Africa, and this is because of the increasing prevalence of obesity and type 2 diabetes mellitus, and the concerted efforts uh, will be required by various stakeholders uh, to define the current situation in terms of the burden of this condition and establish control mechanisms and uh, finally to really prepare for care and management of patients should this epidemic strike us including setting up uh, liver transplant facilities very expensive and most Africans would not be able to afford this kind of uh, treatment. Thank you very much. And again, thank you for inviting me to give this presentation.